We all know why we're here So let me ask you a question then Why the big secret? Truth seekers were really the true leader uh-huh. Keep it grooving the movement like two seaters Turn it up, we're knocking through both speakers It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers say Truth seekers were really the true leaders Keep it grooving the movement like two seaters Turn it up, we knocking through both speakers It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers say Break it down, now can you peep it? They're deceiving all the people, let me ask you what's the secret? What's the secret? Misinformation and lies a devious disguise yeah. They want the EMF blast until our brains is fried Oh, point they beams in the sky, oh it's a movie it's now UFO. This world is all CGI, their plot is truly foul But we're here to rise up and bring the real yeah. Time is now, yeah. true seekers, y'all know how I feel let's go, let's go. Truth seekers, we're really the true leaders yeah, yeah. Keep it grooving, the movement like two Turn it up, we're knocking through both speakers It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers Truth seekers, we're really the true leaders Keep it grooving, the movement like two seaters Turn it up, we're knocking through both speakers It's time we get the truth from the big secret keepers Why the big secret? Truth Seekers, it is Tuesday, no, Thursday, my days are off, but anyway, um, we got a great story, part two of a show tonight for you, and it's all about Noah's Ark, and we talked about Noah's Ark uh, pretty thorough Tuesday night, if you had an opportunity to go to Forbidden Knowledge, you can get part one, and this it's kind of an image. It was Billy and I, and so you can, he, he was the special guest. Tonight, we're gonna tie up a few loose ends of the story. We're gonna ask some questions and we're, we're, we'll get you involved. It's hard to follow the chat over there when you got 5,000 chats, but tonight over here, we can get you involved. We can get you involved in the questions. But the main thing is me growing up as a child, believing a story that now as a full grown adult, you have to question because the legitimacy of not only the story that was told, but even the apparatus that was built for what they call the ark. And with that being said, we we know that our children are still being taught this today, generations after generations and generations. And we already know how they're doing it. They're doing it within the Bible, within uh, the context of these books. But always with Why the Big Secret, the question is, why? Because we know that your eyes are useless when your mind is blind, it's time to think why. We know that there's nothing more important as the why when it comes down to these facts and things that are told in our culture. We know that some people are going to seek the truth of the why, and they're gonna endure the consequences of that if they're not ready for what we're going to be talking about in the future and as of today and as of yesterday and all the other things. But I'm here to tell you with Why the Big Secret, this is what we're gonna do and this is how we're gonna roll it. And I'm excited about that. And so I welcome you to go on this journey tonight. We'll get into it, we'll pop it. 
and it's what we're going to be talking about right all right so as always as you know we have a way we have a way of doing some of the things and i'll say hello to a few people here in the chat uh in just a few seconds over here in the screen but in the meantime truth seekers <laughs> you thought i forgot right yeah okay anyway it is thursday night here on why the big secret youtube channel I'm your host, Roderick Martin, and I'd like to really say that I appreciate you being here if you're here for the very first time. Uh, but anyway, for everyone, um, i like to say you could have been any other place tonight, but you chose to be right here right now. And with that being said, I'd like to bid you good evening, good morning, good afternoon, uh, because we're in 24 time zones that this show shares and, and shows, and so I'm excited about that. I'd like to give you a little history and that is, I'm located in that jumbo state. This is where those UFOs come out to play. It's a Texas thing, y'all. And within Texas, we have big promises. And that is being the boldest, baffling, belligerent YouTube channel in the world, creating captivating conversations that will certainly cause controversy. And they really do. So we're going to hit it tonight. Uh, let's give a, a shout out to Magneticus. Let's give a shout out to Nicole, if she's here, I don't see just yet. Give a shout out to T. Warren. Uh, and that is, this is the team, our producers and researchers. And without them, I will be saying things like this. Yeah, I would, I'd be really quiet without them. So anyway, all right, so let me go down to chat real quick. Uh, we got Laura in the house, Carbon Q in the house, Melanie Bed in the house, Sonya in the world news. Make sure you subscribe to her YouTube channel. Jarrell is in the house, Priscilla's in the house, Water Wonk is in the house, Devon is in the house, Dom Reedy is in the house with us tonight, Tricity is in the house, Clement is in the house. Uh, let's see, Sunshine is in the house. Of course, we said Nicole, Wolfman, Lynn. Jamie, YouTube user, and Marla C, and uh, Bearded and Drell, uh, Body Electric, Dinah, who is the mother of the group, y'all. So she is here in the house. Girlfriend of Bay is in the house. Jen is in the house. Neon is in the house. And uh, if I miss you right now, because I'm going to get started, charge it to uh, the head and not the heart, okay? But I can't do this over in forbidden knowledge. There's just too many people going on, but I definitely would like to, you know, acknowledge the people that are here today uh, when we're here in our setting. And, but someday we'll be just as big and we'll have big stuff there. All right. So if you wasn't with us on Tuesday, like I said, we, we talked about some of the myth and we brought in a special guest, uh, Billy Carson. Now, Without saying, there was a few clips that he said, some things that I'll reference to in today's show that I'll, I'll play. So you'll get to see some of that. But if you have not, go back over and watch it within its entirety. Um, one of the things that, again, that I started out to talk about is all of these myths and what is going on. So I'm going to set the, 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 the whole story up, really. And in the meantime... I don't think I have to give my disclaimer over here that I give over there, right? Because they're a little, it's just, anyway, we all the same family. But if you get to a point where you see some misspelled words or whatever, I have a virtual letterbox. It's right over here to the side. Uh, and it's got A to Z, unlimited letters, unlimited. So you won't run out. If you need to correct some spelling or some things, go in there and pull that out, put it in there, put it in chat, whatever you see from there. I have a virtual grammar box. This one was a little more meticulous because it's going to get you to cause to redo some pronunciations in case I say something a little, a little jagged for you, a little grammar or whatever. But it is unlimited access to, and everybody, there's no password needed. You go into the box, you get out any correction that you want to say that I said it wrong. And then, of course, Jen and Nicole and other is going to bag me up and they're going to type it out with Ebonics for some of you. So I got a whole bag up. I, I, I'm cool with all of that. So, and then Lonnie will take it up from there as well. So we covered, I'm covered. That, that's how it rolls. I am definitely covering. Don't forget to hit the like button as Nicole says as well uh, and share the video. All right. So listen, um, as I begin real quick, uh, our supporters here, let me kind of give you a quick shout out to Dr. Shipe. Make sure you go and check out his videos, Custodium File, Dr. Shipe. 
Uh, and when you want to see some true UAPs, the dragons, he labeled them, how the, our, our government is chasing them down every single day. This is happening so much that it just it flies under the radar. Uh, you definitely want to check it out. But Dr. Scheib has some great videos there. He got great clips. And when you do go over to his YouTube channel, give him a shout out. Let him know uh, the Truth Seekers community is there as well. So uh, we definitely want to support him. Uh, in every kind of way, because he does support us as well to here. All right, so let me set up the theory. We we talked about the Noah's Ark, and I gave a image that you see here on the screen. Now we we talked about how this particular ark and the dimensions of it, and how you know it's inconceivable that it could have held what it held. So let's go over some of the quick facts here in the details. To the right, you got coming in at 45 foot high, 450 feet length and 75 feet wide is a wood ship called the Ark. Coming in on the left, we got the height of 175 feet, 882 length, 92 feet wide, steel construction, and it was called the Titanic. Now, one of them didn't sink, the other one did, so go figure, right? But the Titanic was so big that it held 3,547 people and had provisions enough on the ship to feed them for three weeks. The story that we grew up on with Noah is that it was holding 50,000 animals, 2 million eight insects, eight people, provisions for a year. All right, so do you believe it? Ripley's believe it or not, put it in the comments right now. One, for you believe the ark is true story. Two, you don't believe. And three, you're still confused. Uh, and let's check it out. So I'll wait for that in here in a minute. So there are so many different way, diversions of this uh, story of Noah's Ark. And so we're going to get into uh, some of the things and patch up some work. And one, we're going to start with uh, who was Enoch, right? Uh, of course, we talked about him in the first thing. But, of course, Enoch was the great-grandfather of Noah, supposedly, and who supposedly lived 950 years old. All right, so that right there enough gets you going. Okay, 950 years old. So he could have possibly had probably 10,000 kids at this point. I don't know. Let's say average. He's He's got three, you know, three nice chicks to the side, good harem. You know, they all having three babies a year. All right, whatever. I don't know what that ends up to, but that means he can definitely have some stuff. But the Bible talks about Enoch. Adam's fourth generation grandson, uh, and, 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 and as a special character, he lived a holy and faithful life and supposedly never died. Ruth, okay, he never died. And, and where I'm going with this, when we see some of these stories, as we do, and so give a shout out to Laura for $14.44, and if you gave in the last show, I wouldn't even watch in the comments Tuesday night. So any of you that did give, I want to thank you for that. All right, so we, but in the meantime, we have a bunch of twos, a bunch of twos, twos, twos. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, we got some threes. We got people that are still confused. Uh, we got some twos that says, uh, nope, nope, nope. They do not believe. So we don't have any ones in here tonight. So, all right, that's cool. Uh, T. Warren says uh, a two. Nicole says two. Supernova says two. Magneticus says $44. He don't see the $15.50. He don't have $15.50. All right, but if he had it, he'll give it to me so somebody can give it on his behalf. Marla says she believes in the story. She she really does. Okay, that's cool, Marla. So we got a one. We we have a one here. Uh, and someone else says, can you do captions next time? Um, what type of captions you're, you're, you're speaking of? Lonnie can uh, justify with that. And and our show producer is LaSoul Vibes. When you see her in the air, she handles all that, that stuff. And, and yeah, but I'm sure we can do it. Yeah. All right. So Enoch was allegedly the only person taken to heaven by God. All right. And okay. So that's the story we're talking about in the Bible. And he also appears in the Bible a few times, but most of the extra biblical info is the book of Enoch, which was removed from scripture. So we talked about that a little bit. And most people wonder out of the three stories we, we talked about yesterday. Now you're talking about the book of Enoch where this Noah type story that's similar to the others um, was removed. And maybe there was some truth and maybe they said, Hey, we just need to take that out uh, pretty much, but that's okay from there. Um, also what's in the book of Enoch. And I'm just kind of giving you some backdrop. And then we, we got a few more things that we'll show. I got some video clips for Billy 
from uh, Tuesday night that I'm going to get into as well. Was Noah Ark a spacecraft? And we'll get into that in a few moments. And that was a great question. Uh, one of our researchers, and, and, and of course our team came up with, and Billy answered that. And so I'll definitely take us into that answer in a few moments. But the whole point is this. Uh, the, what's in the book of Enoch was the autobiography in a journal uh, about Enoch's experiences. And one was the encounters with the various angels. And the other was fallen angels. Then we talk about the largely statued people. And, and this goes into the room of giants at some point, warning from good angels. So we got good, we got bad angels. Judgment will be placed in the fallen angels for fathering children with humans and creating angel hi, human hybrids known as Nephilim giants. I mean, this stuff gets real as it can get, right? Uh, and once again, let's pop up. We have a, a support from Judith. And she says she used to be married to a Pentecostal pastor and loved this information because my Bible stores did stories didn't make sense to me. Uh, okay. I get you. I get you, Judith. Uh, and, and shoot, uh, I'm sure it was a battle. I'm sure it was a battle uh, from there. Devon says he's a truth seeker seeking knowledge. I'm here to listen and observe. That's no problem. We got a place for you to, to do that as well. Um, so, but here's the deal. Uh, judgment will be placed on the fallen angels for fathering children with humans and creating angel human hybrids known as Nephilim. So uh, Nicole pronounced it a little more proper than I do, but that's the way I do it. And yeah, I do listen to what she said. All right. Giants. I'm going to use the word giants, which goes to that other word, Nephilim. Y'all can put that in the chat. Bag me up. Bag me up. So the whole point is the judgment was a cast as the uh, the flood itself. And uh, yeah, I was going to do it. I was going to say catalyst me uh, flood, but there we go. All right. So uh, there we go. Please, everyone, hit the like button for Roderick. Yes. Living legend is it. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yes, hit that like button. All right, so now at this point, um, we, we're, we're going to get into what most of us came up with was could Noah's Ark have been more of a spacecraft, okay? And it's, it, it could make sense. It really makes sense that it could be, right? Uh, why not? And But yet we do know that this thing float, then it, it actually – uh, ended up standing, you know, up on uh, the Mount Iris or whatever it was. I'm, I'm, I'm forget real quick. But anyway, they sent out the swallows, the you know, the birds and all that to see for dry land. But you wouldn't need that if it was a spacecraft. You wouldn't have to. You you can see it. You flying around. So that is something that uh, we will definitely. Uh, yeah, there we go. There was some great floods. Someone built an ark. DNA possible. You will get into that. All right. So, all right. At this point. Let's take a, from the book of Noah. We're going to take the from the book of Noah, Enoch 65.6 uh, six or whatever. Um, and it's saying, for they have learned all the secrets of the angels and their secret power and all the power of those who practice magic arts and the power of enchantment and the power of those who cast molten images from all of earth. And the caveat to that could the secrets of angels mean secret of the fallen ets and could the secret be the et technology could help to save them that is something to ponder on okay that is something to really ponder on because once again there is a tie there is a connection between the fact of the extraterrestrials the stories, the human origins, all of that stuff, right? Because they don't do this in the Bible, right? It's the, the ET side of this is non-existence. And if you hadn't got your wide secret mug, you need to get it. It holds water pretty cold. I don't know why. It's a big secret why it holds water cold. If you want cold water, if you want some hot, but get you a mug. They're really cool. And so, yeah, I, I don't know why. You know, you, you can't, you got to figure out, you know, that, you know, we know the connection exists. Now we do as truth seekers. And the question again, why leave these things out and pretty much. And so when you, when you start looking, and, and again, we're not going against the church. That, that is not the fight that I will do. And if you need a leader to go do the fight, my hypocrisy stops right there that cause they, they kill people. They really, okay. Anyway, all right. I'm not going to say that. Then I'll be flagged here on YouTube. <laughs> but anyway, so another part of that, though, 
that we can consider is Enoch 67. Uh, I guess that's chapter 67, verse 2 or whatever, if there's verses, because Enoch is not a Bible. But And now, or is it? And now the angels are making a wooden structure, and when the angels come out from that task, I will put my hand on it and keep it safe, and change shall take place, and so that the dry ground may not remain empty. All right, so somebody is saying this stuff, right? There is somebody preaching, so to speak, this stuff, and that is something, uh, yeah, Jamie, get the book of Enoch, you should. Um, somebody's preaching this stuff. Somebody's putting putting this a, in context for people, uh, and so it, there are hints that form of possibly the beginning of the church, right? Because once again, if you if you think about the vessel of knowledge back then, uh, I used to watch this movie, and it was called The 13th Warrior. Um, and I really liked it. Antonio Banderas played in it, a couple other guys, this guy named Bullfight, he was the, 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 the head guy. And he was a king without a kingdom, but he wanted to be remembered. And that was his main thing. He, and, and I remember the line because I loved the movie. The movie was so great. Uh, and you got to see it, 13th Warrior, that's the name of the movie. But there was a scene right at the end, and, and he was about to die. And he said, what can I do? And he said, if somebody was to draw my deeds so that I may be remembered. Okay. So at this point, I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking of it now saying, so the only way that you can create a story back then, you can create whatever you wanted to create, write it out, draw it out, change the words, pull stuff out, extrapolate it out of the books or whatever. And this is how probably, and most likely hundred percent, how all of this stuff. Now we get partial stories and everything else, but yet Still in the Bibles, you still get Ezekiel, you still get all these other stuff. So we'll, we'll get into it. Now, we did ask Billy Carson uh, the question during our show. We talked to him about, uh, you know, you know, was it a spacecraft or, or something like that? And I'm looking at my notes here and pretty much. And so uh, let's see what he had to say a little bit about it right now. So the tablets were found. So there was an instruction that was given down to uh, Noah, a.k.a. Zeozidra, a.k.a. Unapishtim. That's the really, you know, two names between Babylonian and Assyrian. Okay. Same person. And this information was to create an ark that was in the shape of a disc. Ha. Huh. Not what you showed earlier. Okay. You know what? I had a question for you, and yeah. and it was from one of our, uh, w w you know, when we was doing some research on the show yesterday, and we came up with was did, was the art a spacecraft? You know, could it have been a spacecraft? That was right. it's right here on, on the bottom, right here, and it was number nine to to add. So you know, yeah. I got a few questions I was going to ask you, and that was one of them, right there. So there we go. Mm. So it's pretty interesting. So it was a disc. Now, of course, mm. mainstream doesn't want to say spacecraft. In my opinion, it's a it okay. was a uh, a DNA bank. You know, at the least, at the best, it could have been some type of a craft, or at least a DNA bank uh, that also had uh, you know the capability of surviving on top of water. But let's take a look at. Right, so that was part of the conversation, and Billy really went hard in some of the things, and so I definitely want you to uh, definitely check that out. If you hadn't seen it, go over to, uh, you know, Forbid Knowledge and check it out. And if you hear it for the first time, also uh, put it in a chat. If you hear it for the first time, let us know first time uh, so the community itself can give you a shout-out as well. So more on the theory, uh, which – probably no more, you know, Billy doesn't confirm from him, and I trust him as a trusted source, you know, from there. But it said that the ark uh, exists because of the flood was one of the things. And it said the flood wiped out every living thing, including flora and fauna. Okay. Uh, the earth remained bare of about a year, supposedly, after this and wouldn't have any quantities that was very much larger than what we have on our earth today. So uh, would have had a quantity. So here's the deal. When you think about all of this, and, and again, you know, you have to go into a total thought, you know, that every, 
all the animals, everything came. Noah got them all. And, let, you know, now I could play the other side of the fence. I can say we didn't have that many animals here at the time. There was nothing here. There was probably just a few animals. And so he could put all of those on that boat, ship, or whatever he built at that moment. But the whole point is, my thing is how this story is still being told today how it makes it possible. And even if you today are parents of, you know, a little mini use people that are a little micro of you, you know, miniature humans of you, and you still know this and you send them into a place where they're going to teach them that Adam and Eve was the beginning. We all come from Adam and Eve. Uh, all of a sudden Noah put everything on this boat and you know, that is going on. What do you do? What do you do? So, and, and I know a lot of people don't waste time telling their kids Santa Claus don't exist. And the only reason we do that, or you probably do that, because you don't want to spend the money on Christmas. You, you want to <laughs> eliminate that, right? There ain't no Santa Claus. Well, why don't you go back, or you, not you, but who, whatever. But anyway, so the other part of this is that what are the odds? And we're, we're going to talk about this. is kind of some questions that I'm throwing in here just to get some people to think a little bit here. But what are the odds that something the size of one5 football fields made of wood carrying every animal and plant species uh, could float atop of a flood for an entire year. Now we said it before in the first show, what did they eat? And, but we know something happened because when they got there, it was only a few people left. So what happened to everybody else? But what did they eat? Right? Uh, what, what, what happened to all of this stuff? And, and again, these are stories that are told. What about the animals in these wooden cages? Would they have turret, tore the wood up. You're talking lions, tigers, bears, oh my, okay? Uh, I mean, what is really happening? And I'm only bringing this into a, a, a normal size of a conversation because these are things that we should ask when it comes down to it. But, and the food, what about the food? We were supposed to believe that all stayed fresh for an entire year. What, what were no refrigerators back then. I know I'm joking. I, I am funny. But what are we using preservatives, a cannon? What, you're talking vacuum ceilings? There were, I mean, what technology? Preserve. Now, all right, you got meat on board. You can go hunt a little bit in the cage and kill it. But if you kill one, we don't have any more. So obviously roaches and, and, and mosquitoes and all that wasn't on the menu because we got them. And I, and I would think if you're going to leave anything behind, why would you bring two roaches, uh, two rats and two mosquitoes? Why? Why? Just leave them things behind, right? Then we wouldn't have any, supposedly. Okay, that's cool. We wouldn't. But at the point, yeah, let's be practical about it. There's too much cargo, too much room, uh, and we can take this story for word. So that's what we're going with it. And uh, two more parts of this is where would a spaceship hide from the gods if we want it and everyone would wipe that, right? And then some said a spaceship had advanced cloaking technology and it could go undetected. All of these stuff was just myth when it comes down to it. And uh we, well, we're going to get into some more of this uh, in just a moment as well. So let me look into the chat a little bit uh, and 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 put this up. So Marla said, wait, you're correct. I never thought it made sense that we're the only people. Earth is longer than that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty much. Uh, hold on. Let's go back. Nicole said her kids. She says, my kids know the story, but when they get old and ask my opinion, I will tell them the real deal. Okay, that's cool. All right, so we got $10 from the GOAT. Y'all give him a shout-out, just supporting the new channel. He loves the content. So he's new. Y'all give him a shout-out, everybody, right now, for the $10 supporting the show. Uh, appreciate you from there as well. And welcome, welcome, welcome. And, you know, so again, you know, we, we're going to cover some of these things here. So if you didn't know, again, the, you know, we, we cover a lot of topics. And, and our most thing is to go into – the why. And so now there was some other stuff that Billy talked about. He gave a different description of the ark. Okay. Uh, in fact, I, I still have a couple of the photos that he was showing. And one in particular is he showed a photo of this, that it was a round object. Okay. Uh, but one of the things to, to remember that he said that there was a Babylonian art tablet that they found. Okay. Uh, and they call it the round arc theory. And in this particular tablet, uh, which is right here, I'll show you, 
there was specific instructions on how to build the ark. There was specific instructions. And so the people said, okay, we're going to go out and we're going to follow this blueprint, so to speak, and we're going to do this. And so uh, in here, in the old Babylonian account of the flood, they said God Inca instruct, uh, uh, what's his name, Atra sees that the Babylonian Noah to build an ark. He describes the construction of coral, traditional basket-like boat, familiar with the uh, Mesopotamian audiences, okay? And so in here, once again, you still get all of these different stories. We're talking about the, the, the uh, I think it's the great, the Gigamesh epic or whatever. So we got all of these different stories, uh, but once again, Enoch, the book of Enoch decides, say, we're just going to pull it out. We're not going to go down like that. We're not going to go down, but everybody else said, we're going to stick with it, Christianity and where I come from, uh, is we're going to stick with the story. We're going to stick with the story and we're going to, this thing is going to work. It's going to work because we're going to tell it to them when they're little kids. And then when they're little kids, they believe anything just about, and then they will grow up and, and regurgitate it to their kids, you know, and another part for our seas was to build a boat with a diameter close to 230 feet across and 20 foot high walls. Now this boat is made out of a massive quantity of palm fiber rope sealed with uh, Budiman. Now, Billy talks a little more about it uh, in detail, and so I'll play a clip of him. Capability of surviving on top of water. But let's take a look at the illustration that they created based on this, this new development that is official now. It's made it into mainstream peer-reviewed archaeology okay. that uh, this object is the actual ark. Let me see if I have it here. Oh, so now they're reconstructing it. Really? Based on these tablets, they are reconstructing the original Ark that has been plagiarized into the modern day Bible. And you can see clearly here, uh, you can see the shape, the design. They're following the exact instructions on those tablets that I just showed you, which show that the Ark was never built the way that it was talked about in the Bible. That's a fabrication that the Ark was built in a disc shape, and you can see the hypothesis here of the illustration where they're putting a giraffe, <laughs> put a giraffe in this thing. Hey, come, God, hey, come on, stop it. <laughs> There's no giraffes going yeah, in this no. thing. Come on. And when you read the when you read the, the 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 tablet, which anybody can read, okay. Let me bring this down again. Let me let me go back and bring this down. So there you have it. I mean, you know. Once again, he this tablet, which was etched in stone way back then, gave a very dis good description and the uh, instructions uh, for people to follow, and they decided to rebuild it. And then you saw the illustration, the giraffe picture is in there, meaning it wasn't that they was in there. It was saying, like, really? You think a giraffe could have gone inside of this thing and pretty much? You know, one of the things that I think we should, as people, begin to process, um, and and I've said it before, you know, we understand how they did it. You know, Orville, and he has a book, 1984, and he talks about, uh, at that time, he says, you know, he understands how and why they was doing these wars and different things. Uh, not how, but how and what they was doing. But he said he never could understand, and the most important thing was the why. And I like to say that again because – you know, if you think about it, we can laugh all day and say, you know, why, you know, what, what was in there? We don't believe it. We now know it's not to be true, but we still got to dig deeper to find out why, why would they even put that in place in the first place? Why would someone says this story needs to be uh, put where it needs to, you know, where it was anyway. So Lonnie and I was having a discussion today and Lonnie is the show producer uh, La Soul vibes that you see here in the chat. And one of the questions we was talking about, you know, the reversal of Adam and Eve uh, with Noah was people here long before that and all that stuff. And then it's kind of like they had to reposition it in the Bible. It, it, it appears to be out of order. So now you got the Noah story after, if I'm not mistaken, uh, with after, with behind the Adam and Eve story. It's like, okay, it got to make sense. We got to have it to, 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 it has to happen because Adam and Eve is supposed to be the beginning and, and within the beginning, all everything and uh, from the rib and the rib and the side rib, we got a billion so people. All right. So, all right. Yeah, go figure. And, uh, but at the end of the day, those are the things that get you wondering, 
uh, and you have to truly, truly ask yourself, was there some type of conspiracy? If this was a conspiracy, they'd have to get all those people to lie. Yeah, they would have to get all those people to lie. And they did. They did. They lied to us for a year and still doing it, by the way. All right. So it works. They they lie. They or whatever. All right. So we can now go into what was the arc? What could it have been? What could if it wasn't as big as the world to carry two million species of of, of whatever, uh, fifty thousand animals, uh, everybody. It wasn't you know enough to carry everybody. And then at this point, and believe me. Now my question is: If you got a million people on an ark, men and women, grown men and women, how many people would it would have been by the time they got off that boat? We would have had some babies, right? Somebody would have been doing some stuff. I know the kids better be asleep. They better not be watching this tonight. I'm telling you, don't don't do it. I'm just telling you all these things that we think about. So, but what could it have been? Now we had a discussion with Billy. We talked about um, could. It, Cause I asked the question was what could this thing be? What else could this art could have carried? Now we, we can get into a story of what we would consider the word, the world seed bank. Right. Uh, and now that is something, and, and I want you to kind of hear what happens with a seed bank, the seed, the global seed vault in the, in uh, the Norwegian Arctic opened in 2008. Now, it's located in the permos far as the mountainside of uh, Skabobard or whatever this archipelago of Norway, okay? That's the grandma box. You make sure you go use that crap, okay? It's there. Now, this facility houses 1.2 million seed samples from every corner of the planet as a type of insurance policy against uh, some type of, you know, catastrophe, Right. All right, so that makes sense. That makes sense. We will do that, right? And uh, and right now, you know, I used to breed uh, French bulldogs, and I'm, I don't even do it anymore. But I still got a dog specimen frozen, two two of my male studs that are long gone. So if I ever decide to get back in it, find a nice female, I go and had them to 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 send me those sperms that's frozen and cryostasis been there for years now, like six, seven, eight years. Will last another fifty. And, and I can breed my dog that's even not even here anymore. Oh, wow. All right, so the, the, it's, it's, it's a monument that's 12,000 years of human agriculture that aims to prevent the permanent loss of crop species after war, natural disasters, and the pandemic. And that makes you wonder, we got a lot of uh, animals that are going extinct, right? Even, the, 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 you know, and, and you still get today that they're preserving uh, waterlands, different places, because they want to make sure, you know, little species don't go extinct. But if we got seeds, do we have DNA banks? Ha, huh, that's a great question. We're going to get into that in a moment. Uh, but the other part, deposits are buried so deep in the permafrost, or permafrost, I'm sorry, I said forest earlier too, right? So we got the permafrost that they will be safe for centuries. And now, one would say, okay, what would happen if we got an electrical outlet, something happened to these seeds and everything else or whatever it is, and they said if the cooling system ever failed, it will probably take hundreds of years for the temperature inside those vaults to rise above zero. Uh, and they're kept at a negative 18 degrees Celsius inside that vault. Now, this is an international standard temperature for conserving seeds. Now, they say these seeds are replaced every few decades. Why? Why would you replace, if they're supposed to last forever or in this stage, what need it is to do that? Now, I wish I had a, a brought you, if you know uh, a while back, you would saw me eating a lot of mandarin oranges, right? Y'all remember that if you was here before. And one of the things I was doing, uh, I was eat these oranges because I love it. They, you know, they, and I mean, the mandarin, they're lethal, those cuties, right? But then I started, I got, I, I got turned on at Sprouts to something called a sumo mandarin, right? These things are ugly as you can get out, but they're so good. I mean, they're really good, right? And Nicole said, oh, I tried them. They're good too. Well, I've had plenty of them, and but one of them, I found a seed in it. And I'm like, wait a minute. These things are seedless. So they're trying to control the growth. So I, t I 
I asked the show producer, I said, look, we need to find something. I'm going to take this one seed. I'm going to put it up somewhere. And once I retire or whatever I do, I'm going to grow my own manders because they don't want nobody to have them, but I got a seed. So what do I do with it? How do I protect that one seed? I'm not freezing it. So if anybody got any ideas sitting on my desk in there, I need to put it up because I want to grow or I'm going to go ahead and plant it now. Uh, so I'm thinking like the, the, the big folks are doing. All right. So here's the deal. What I was asking uh, Billy about the, um, the, the the seed bank and here's what he had to say. It was um, seed banks or something, you know, huh? Uh, maybe they were seed banks, you know, just carrying DNA versus Actual. Yeah, that's what I believe. I mean, what can you put yeah. in there? In other, in other words, in uh, DNA seed banks, you can put you can put actual seeds and plants and herbs and things like that. And of course, whatever local livestock you may have had that can fit on this thing, but certainly not two of every kind. It says the text about the great flood and the order by God to one man just to build a boat and have himself save his entire family. All right. So as you can see that that now that's another theory of what the art purpose was, right? And also that this thing could impossible look like a flying saucer. Now, what we're going to talk about real quick, we're going to get into something that a lot of people was asking, what was the race of Nor? But before we do that, we're going to talk about the Conscious Awards. I need to uh, share with you, this is a epic event. Everybody who in our community, truth seekers, should be going to the Conscious Community because we want to represent uh, not only the Why the Big Secret team show, all of us, but the community of consciousness people and all, and giving people their flowers. This has never been done before. It's going to be in Miami. We all can hang out, have a good time. Uh, I don't know how close it is to the beach for some of you who have beach bodies uh, and all that stuff. Liz, uh, we're waiting on my stuff from her so we can get her going down there. Uh, and, and I think somebody's going to go with her or whatever. You know, we're going to do our auction, Liz. Girl from the Bay. All right. So, but the whole point I'm saying is the Conscious Award is a special thing. And and it's pretty cool uh, that Billy is putting this together. And one of the things that I like, and, I, you know, I've told my story before that a few years ago, um, you know, I was, you know, I've always been into the UFO topic. I am a certified UFO investigator today for MUFON, but I've always wanted to make sure that we can get the word out and do some things. And here's some of the stuff I've done in the last year or so. Uh, Regina uh, Meredith, which is Open Minds. You have a Beyond Belief with uh, George Nori, um, the Alien Endgame. Uh, that I host a show in there, and then, of course you got Fox Tubi. I'm in that particular show as an expert. Forbidden Knowledge. I'm got an eight episode show on his network, as well as being in the Black Knight Satellite. Uh, also recently uh, on the Ancient Aliens. Check me out, and, and pretty much, and uh, but. Once again, I'm just talking about being part of the Conscious Award where you can say, hey, I will vote for this guy. But in the meantime, before I get into uh, the clip of the Conscious Awards, then we will also share with you uh, something that I want you to check out. And just so happened, I looked up and I saw this little disc thing moving like, and it was followed by two military jets. But it was a secret because in my community, that's not something that you go and talk about extraterrestrials weren't inducting us why not <laughs> it's like okay we don't been on ships in the past we're not getting on another ship without a destination period <laughs> the younger people are now being what i consider emotionally and religiously bankrupt and you start thinking wait a minute free energy no billions free energy no billions hmm. lock the door <laughs> tell everyone your eyes are useless when your mind is blind we got to get past the point where we see things but our mind won't let us interpret it people ask all the time Roderick what do the ETs look like and then I say I don't know if you want my answer and I'm glad you just asked me all right that is the show with Regina Meredith it's been out about a month or so I want you to check it out in the description, there is a link to that show. Uh, there's a free trial, whatever, with Guy. If you had not, we I am a Guy ambassador, so it is given to me for my partnership with them. But uh, uh, I'll show you some of the George Nori clips uh, in the future. But definitely, I want you to check that out. Hit the link. Leave some good reviews. There are some things that working in the backdrop. I would love uh, for you guys to go watch that show. Leave some great reviews on the Guy's platform. In the meantime, let's talk, have Billy tell you about 
a special day that's coming up, and I think all of us should be there. Hey, everybody. It's Billy Carson, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. I want to talk to you about a very special event coming up July 30th, 2023, the Forbidden Conscious Awards, the first annual event of its type. We're going to honor people who have been contributing to the conscious community for decades. People that you know and love that have helped you get to higher levels of thought and consciousness and awareness. And guess what? It's time to give them their flowers while they're still alive. It's going to be a live in-person event, but seats are going to sell out very fast. You want to make sure you're there in person for this amazing level event. It's going to be above the Oscars, above the Grammys. And guess what? You can help vote for the winners. Voting is available on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. And the categories are going to be social media influencer, podcast slash radio host, TV host, actor, director, producer, entrepreneurs, health and wellness, philanthropists, authors, field researchers, archaeologists, space anomaly hunters, and of course, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And you want to be there in person because I'm going to be speaking. That's right. I'll be your key note speaker that night at the Forbidden Conscious Awards. If you want to come to a mini conference, this is the place to be because I'm going to give you the knowledge that night as well as performances. We have celebrity guests performing. We'll have a halftime show where we're actually going to perform music for you. And don't forget about the pre-event mixer, where if you buy a box seat, you'll be in the VIP section, and you also have private access to a VIP mixer with celebrity guests. Shake hands, break bread, network, and then walk the red carpet with us and take amazing photos. It's going to be a night to remember. You don't want to forget this. And you help vote by going to ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Go to the Conscious Awards link. You can text in a vote for who you want for any category, as well as if you're out of the country, you can use the web form ballot to still vote for anyone you think is worthy of being honored that night. Make sure you hurry up and get your tickets because they're selling out very fast. I want to see you there. Forbidden Conscious Awards 2023. I want to see you there. Forbidden Knowledge Conscious Award 2023, baby. Make sure you come and support. And listen, go right here right now. Vote for Roderick.com. I made it simple. Just put in a URL into your browser. You're going to see the podcast radio part. Put my name in it, your name, submit it. Uh, and let's do it. I really uh, want to win. I want to win. I, I really do. Uh, I think we should go as a community. I think when we hold that award up and, and, and Lonnie and I had the same dream the same night holding that award up and uh, in two different places, of course. She's way over there. So the whole point was we're going to win this award, our community. Uh, I'm getting some, some images made. I hope that each and every one of you would support it. We'll have it on the website soon. You download it, post it on social media. Come on, I want to win this award for us, for our community uh, and the support and everything else. And uh, that's what we wanna do and uh, pretty much. So let's get into uh, the other part of this conversation. We talked about everybody wondered what race was Noah and you know you think about it what did he look like right it's always been a question about that it's been a question of was he a giant was he small was he a midget you know uh was he a dwarf uh you know what was he what did he look like you know was he you know black okay uh possible uh was he you know red blue green you know what did he look like let's get into that right now and pretty much. So one of the things that we start looking at was, and I did ask Billy the question, uh, but I'll get into a couple of things. So we were wondering, especially in, not wondering, uh, in our research group, uh, they know the stuff. I'm the only one to be going around wondering because I'd be like, well, what, what was it? What's the deal? You know, uh, and pretty much. And so let me go back for a quick second. Marla says she voted for me. Thank you so much for voting for me. And if you did vote for me and have not voted for me, please uh, do that. Irene said, I watched you on Gal last night. Thank you. Thank you, Irene, for watching the show. Uh, pretty much from there, I, I really appreciate it uh, from there. What does Rob want to be nominated for? Um, it's for the Forbidden Knowledge Conscious Award. The link will be down up in the room in there or or pretty much. There you go. Vote for Roderick. Uh Lonnie, remove that S off of that link because that it won't go anywhere with the HPT 
it's got to uh, remove the S um, and, and repost that link because it ain't going to work um, from there. All right, so uh, at this point, what race was Noah? It's more likely uh, we the fallen passages point that Noah being a albino. Yeah, with bushy white hair and rosy undertone and golden colored eyes. Yeah, the book of Enoch uh, states, uh, and this is 105. Uh, well, I don't know. If, you know, let me ask the question here. Is book of Enoch verses or is just chapters? What are we talking about here? Put it in a chat real quick, my, my researchers, and y'all y'all bail me out right now because uh, I'm, I'm running across this thing. And, uh, yeah, anyway, so how do we want to refer to that? All right, uh, the book of Enoch, and one of the parts says, After time, my son uh, in Massasuela took a wife for his son, Lameth, and she became pregnant by him, and brought forth a child, and the flesh of which was as white as snow, shoo, whoa, and red as a rose, and the hair of his head was like a white, like wool, and long, and whose eyes were beautiful. When he opened them, he illuminated the house like the sun, and the whole house abounded with the light, and he was taken. Look, we the word is word in this thing, y'all. The book of Enoch was removed from the Bible. I think it's verses and chapters. Okay, so Nicole says verses and chapters. Okay, so from the hand of the midwife, opening also his mouth, he spoke to the Lord of righteousness. And then Lamet, his father, was afraid of him. Why? Okay, the father was afraid of him like, that ain't my baby. See, if we can go back in time, and if Noah was here with them today, It'll go something like this. Uh, not Noah, but whoever his dad was, Lamet. It'll say, Lamet, judging by the records and from the DNA, you are not the father. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so it's verses and chapters. But could you imagine? Because, again, he 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 felt that he was, he was afraid of me. He's like, man, look at this. I didn't make this, you know, or whatever. So at this point, Jarrell said he voted, appreciate it. If you have voted for me, put it in a chap in the thing here today. Uh, T. Warren says chapters. Appreciate it. That's my team. All of them uh, chapters and verses. Okay, so this is how we're going to go down. But, yeah, could you imagine today, you know, that's what it had been like. You are not the father. And he'd been like, shh. All right, so because he was upset. Uh, he, he looked at him, and he said, uh, flying away, he goes, he was afraid of him, flying away, came to – uh, his own father, uh, Matsula, or however you pronounce that, go to the grabbing box for that. And he said, my begotten son, unlike other children, he's not human, but he resembled offspring of angels of heaven of different nature from ours being, although unlike uh, to us. So that means somebody, it's a possibility now we know that that's what the whole problem was in breeding with humans and, and everything else. Lynn said he voted for me, appreciate it right now. Red said he voted. Of course, Marla said she voted. Uh, if you voted for me and have not, please go ahead and let's do that. We, we're, we're playing to win, baby. We are playing to win this thing. Uh, and I want to hold that trophy up and be truth seekers. And, and I hope you're going to be there in the audience. We're going to chant, why the big secret? Why the big secret? Yeah, we're going to do all that stuff. All right, so at this point, um. Here's some of the article implications of what was going on with this. And they were saying that, and, and before I get into this, uh, they were saying that Noah was born with white skin. They said he didn't look like, he didn't look like any other humans. The man believed that Noah was a son of an angel. So I don't know how you look at the girl in your life and say, look, I know this ain't my baby, but who did it? And she can say it was God. And how, how do you fight that? Or the angels? How do you tell your girl? I, anyway. That's me bring, bridging real time in the back time because these stories, like, how did you just have a baby? And he says, uh, damn, where would that come from? All right. Anyway, so he was white-skinned. It was not a common among humans, and the children of angels, the Nephilim, were white. Now, Nephilim were giants. So could Nora have been some type of giant? And then we're talking about the pre-flood humans were people of color. 
They was based up on the location of the Garden of Eden, and they was most likely brown-skinned, right? Uh, And if they were brown or dark, they was passed down from Adam. It would mean that Adam was most likely brown or dark skin. I don't, I don't, I know, I don't, I just said it. I don't said it. Yeah, I, I, I know. I just said it. Adam could have been brown skinned. And that goes back into Project Black that is coming up. The Black League of Alien Contact Knowledge. You got to be a part of what we're going to be doing. We're about to launch this thing soon. Uh, there is a story behind this that you will hear about. Got a PowerPoint made. And you need to look closely at this picture. Uh, and gather some illustration part of what I'm trying to give you a message in between what is happening there. And so we're going to be talking about that in, in, in a little bit. But in the meantime, in our discussion with Billy the other day, we did ask him a little bit about, uh, you know, what his thoughts was. And all of a sudden, you know, he gave his answer. In fact, uh, let me play it for you right now. That two things, that nor could have been what we call albino and then of course he was a nephilim was he a giant he wasn't a giant but he was definitely albino you know he was an albino he was an albino his eyes were light his eyebrows were light his hair was light his skin was light it was like a person that was an albino when you look into some of the accounts of some of the anunnaki some were dark some were like albino right they were like Mm -hmm. mute of colors that's the term. That's the that's the description. Uh, some were white with red hair. Some were looked more Asian. That what we learned. The more I study these Anunnaki people, they had every single race that we have on Earth, which makes sense. Makes sense. Because when you read the Emerald Tablets, you discover something interesting. Both, also known as Nigazita, aka Dhuti, Tahuti. All right. So there you have it. There's a possibility there, and. Um... Laura, yes, you can uh, participate. Project Black is not just for black people. It is for uh, all of us in the community where we have what I consider disproportionately representation and stories when it comes down to uh, stories in the African-American and the indigenous uh, people and, you know, other people, you know, when it comes down to extraterrestrials and stuff, right, and aliens and starting the conversations. And my goal is to create a place where we can get those conversations out. People feel comfortable talking about it because it's a taboo subject in my uh, community. It is strictly a real taboo subject. Um, And so, yeah, as many as people as we can, it don't matter who you are. I just need the persons to be open-minded. It's not a white or black thing. It just that so happens we're going to focus in that area there where there is lack of information coming out and we're going to get that information out for the whole collective. And that is the, the uh, process of this. And so we want people that are scientists. We want ex military. We want, I need a collection of people that start coming forward. Uh, and again, if you are in Dallas, Texas, the weather is changing in a few weeks, we're going to do our first meetup uh, where we're going to, I'm going to either rent a place out by this little pond here by the office. There's a little pond. We can all sit there and just chill uh, and talk, bring the cameras. Um, We're going to do this thing. So I want you all to be ready uh, for that. I'm getting emails. If you're emailing me, I'm writing your numbers down. Some of you I've been calling back. uh, And once again, um, if you email me a while back, you can resend it, and I'm putting it all into a file, and and we're going to have – uh, some local meetups here in Dallas. And we're going to do it as frequently as we can, get to know one another, uh, create a, a group organization where we can really talk about this stuff. And so we're we're going to be doing that. Um, all right. So uh, that is something there. So let's get into uh, some, some things that I want to ask the, the audience and we'll engage in a few questions because – uh, we're about at that point of the show we're we're, we're coming because we're just tying in some of the stuff from Tuesday night. Uh, and some of the questions is, is that I want to truly talk about is, and these are just questions that here's the deal. If you're watching an audience, I'm going to ask a question, and maybe we answered it, we didn't answer it uh, at all, but I want you to type an answer in the chat, and I'll just pick them as we go. Uh, and put them up on the screen, and that gives us together. We got about maybe 
10 questions that we can use here. Uh, and then we can kind of go into it. Now, before I get anywhere with that, again, we're, we're going to be having a Tuesday night show and we'll be talking about the Giants. Uh, and then after that, we're going to get deep into an area that's going to wake you up uh, in the, in a series. We'll, we'll get that show going from there. So let's get the first question. And again, I want you to answer it in the chat so that we can do that. Uh, and it's from the biblical story. So let's do this. How did Noah manage to build an ark, uh, with primitive tools and technology? And how did he gather all those animals from around the world? Let's go. Somebody answer that. Even if we don't believe it, how could he have done it? Let's just go there. Uh, there are better questions in the doc. No, I'm reading out loud. Well, I can't print it on this computer, so I won't be able to pull it up. Um, so at this point, um, yeah, that's yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. We got we have we have a little mic in the back, <laughs> acting skills, baby. All right. So at this point, um, yeah. So what we could do again? Let's see if you. Oh, Magneticus says great skill and determination. John says it never was built. He said Noah never built an ark. So what did he build, John? If he did exist in all the stories, what did he build uh, from there? All right. Somebody says uh, advanced human, superhuman intervention. T. Warren says there was advanced human super intervention, meaning uh, – probably extraterrestrial. Somebody came and said, let's help you build this. Uh, we already talked about it in the show where he could have been possibly getting some telepathic messages uh, from, I think, Enlil or one of the others. And there are just so many, because you got three different stories. The Gigglemish story, you got, uh, you know, all the different stories out there, so you want to check that out. But uh, that is something from there. Look, Magneticus says, Roderick is hearing voices. Actually, it was my pretending uh, to hear Lonnie when she was texting me, really, and, and saying uh, what she was saying. So, all right. So, all right. Uh, Irene says, technology unknown to the mainstream people. And John said he never, ever. Uh, let's see what John said. Let me go up here real quick. He said uh, he never existed. There is no scientific proof. Sirius said she voted for uh, Sirius said he voted for Roderick. Thank you so much uh, from there in in voting. Uh, Noah used the aliens to help him is what Randy says. Devon says or beings uh, that could be from there, and he said definitely some help from higher beings. Okay, so at this point, if we if we all are under not all of us, but the people who are under the assumption or assuming or believe or know that Noah built or had help, why don't we hear these in the Bible? Why is this, why is help from extraterrestrial is excluded from many of these stories, really? Well, some of them do say there's some higher things and supernatural things happening, but if it's in the Bible and some of these things we're pulling passages that from different books, which are accessible to all ministers and pastors and everyone else, why do they leave the story out? And if you are in ministry yourself, and I know there's some people watching this or know somebody who's a minister or maybe in, you know, going down that path, why would you leave the story out? Or do you or would you leave some of these components out if you were teaching Bible study? That's a question for you. All right. Uh, and so at this point, the other question is, and it just kind of just talking about stuff, right? Can the world's animal species actually fit inside the ark? And how did they survive in such a close quarters for a year? And, uh, and these are just some subtle questions, but it's the thing that I would like for you to try to answer it because this is something that somebody could try to explain to somebody to say, okay, 
we can say we can put all these animals in here and the lion can stay next to the zebra and the zebra can stay next over here to the monkey and the monkey or whatever. And then the little monkeys, the big monkeys and the birds can over here, the ostrich over here. Oh, by the way, the giraffe is tall and he can hang over here with the gorillas uh, and, 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 and the rhinoceros. And the, oh, let's go into the bugs. You got the ants, you got the mice, you got rats, you got all these. Everybody's just hanging out, chilling. Uh, how does that truly happen? And at what point do somebody say, stop it? At what point do somebody say, it's time for the truth to be told? Uh, yeah, we got it in books, but you, ain't, you don't really hear anybody out there marching, saying in front of the church, saying, this is not true. This is not, or, or singing our, our song, truth seekers, or, you know, blah, 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 right? You know, big secret keepers. Y'all know, you, you know the theme, you know the song. True seekers are the true leaders, right? All right, so what happens with that? Uh, Roderick, what's your cash out? Woo-hoo, conscious girl. Hold on a minute. Shoot. <laughs> she said, what is that cash out? Let me find that. I got a picture for that. Better have one. What are you talking about? What? What? There we go. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. There it is at the top of the screen. Cash app is at the top, uh, and it's why the big secret uh, cash app. Uh, up there at the top of the screen. So I appreciate the support and I will call it out uh, when it goes from there as well. But once again, when do the story stops? When do we get to a point to where we, somebody begins publicly, publicly, and I'm not saying, oh yeah, we got a YouTube video. I'm saying you go march, somebody goes down to the church and says, stop, you know, the fake news. Uh, of these stories, uh, and pretty much when does that happen? Uh, I don't know. We will have to see. Uh, we have to pretty much uh, go down that thing. If someone deleted the Cash App CEO. Yeah, I heard about that. And then they said that there's a new, well, I don't know if it's true, but Fed Now is supposed to be a new Cash App that's coming out, ran by our big secret keepers. Um, and all of a sudden this dude, you know, get, you know, whatever, but in the like of him to make sure his system still works. Yeah. Cash out me. That'll be good. Uh, Nicole says, um, uh, I think it's a representative story of how many individuals survived the younger drives, uh, Catholicisms. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Jarrell says roaches were left behind and made their own art and saved the rats and the flies. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So another question is what happened to the marine animals, uh, which that would probably be not nothing to worry about because marine animals was fish and whales. I'm sure they were still swimming uh, and done that. So that'll been pretty good there and pretty much. All right. Uh, Sonia from world news uh, sent uh, some bucks. Appreciate it. Appreciate the support to the show uh, and pretty much from there. It's been a while since I got a support since, um, you know, I I'll talk about that later. But anyway, um, so even in the marine animals, even though it's supposed to have been turbulent waves and all of this stuff, how did they survive uh, these things? And it, and it just makes so much sense. Um, another part, did the biblical tale of Noah's Ark influence other myths or was it the other way around? That's a question for your audience, uh, and I'll ask it again. Did the biblical tale of Noah, uh, Ark, did it influence other flood myths, or was it the other way around? What influenced this one, or where do we find those things? And that's a question for you or for our scholars uh, in the audience, and you can go ahead and write the answer uh, to that, uh, and we can definitely check that out from there. Um, yeah, now they, yeah, okay. So there it again, once again, we got the cash app up there if you're interested in uh, or you find it any value, make sure you like the video today and we, we want to do that. Now the whole point is um, now that we got scientific evidence in this thing, what role of scientific evidence and critical thinking in evaluating the claims of the Noah's Ark uh, story? Because there was a guy that he ended up, uh, doing this ark encounter and this guy ended up building an ark to the exact specifications, a museum of the story in the Bible. 
And look at this thing. It's sitting there by some water. There's a few trees. And you want to tell me once again, everything on planet Earth went into this thing or wherever it was after at the time went into that that thing. And and I just keep harping on that because we believe that as kids now. Um, it, it's, it can't be as big as the Santa Claus story, right? Uh, coming down the chimney, right? Uh, and I grew up in a house. We didn't have a chimney, but guess was being under the tree. And so I had to figure out, did he use the front door? Okay, yeah, whatever. We're not going to go there. But, man, there's so many things we're told as children. So many. Are you still, the question is, are you still lying to your kids today? Do you tell them the story of Rudolph, the red no reindeer, uh, or whatever, the, 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 the Easter bunny, the, the freaking, you know, what stories and myths do we all hear that's biblical that we come down with, right? Do, are we still telling those stories? Um, and the stork, oh, the baby came from a stork. Your sister came in uh, from a stork, and, and they're just looking at you. But I heard you and mommy and daddy. No, but no, that you didn't hear with me and mommy and daddy. But he was like, no, no, it, it's a stork. We told those stories. I told them. I told my kids some of that stuff, right? And I and I heard it from my mama and everything else. And so when do it stop? I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. We, we can deal with it. Okay. Cash app just went off. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, you know what? Let's shoot. Droney, appreciate it. The, 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 the bread on the cash app. Thank you. All right, then. Boy, I ain't seen something like that in a long time. Whew. I, yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Okay, so, yeah, that hit home there. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, Droney. Y'all give Droney a shout-out. For a some show love, same with Sonya. So two people show some love, one show some love, and other show love. A lot of love. Uh, I want to appreciate you uh, for supporting the show and and as you're doing. If anyone else find any value, again, San Antonio is in the house droning. Let me pop it up. Thank you once again for the support you just sent. And then for Sonya, y'all make sure y'all subscribe to her YouTube channel, uh, channel Sonya the World News and. Uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, and you can uh, definitely check out her. She does a lot of storytelling at night, and she'll tell you some stories and, and pretty much. And so, uh, once again, uh, appreciate it. Dr. Shipe, like I said, supporting the show. Make sure y'all go to his YouTube channel, uh, Custodian Files, and uh, which is definitely uh, cool to, to go there. And, and we will be doing that as well. And so... Anyway, let me uh, continue and up there again if you want to support the show. Another part of things that we we can get into, and we're about to get out of here anyway, um, is the fact that there are just more stories within this biblical context that we're going to be doing. Uh, once again, if you found anything you have not liked the video, like everything, come back and post your great comments and uh, we're going to be live streaming starting next week. I'm going to try to do some daily during the day, every day. Uh, then we're going to do a full show on Thursdays that will probably come from when, uh, Tuesday night show as well. All right, so is there any other questions that anyone have about the Noah's Ark story? Uh, we we just tied up some loose ends tonight, but then the first show, like I was telling you, part one, you would have found it on Forbidden Knowledge TV. So you want to definitely check that out. But I have my scholars, my researchers, and different people who are here tonight within my mind and my consciousness. And I promise you, if you got a question, somebody can answer it. So let's look up here right now before the last few minutes of the show. If you got a question that we have not covered, something you want to know that's pertaining to the Noah's Ark myth, uh, post it here. I will put it up on the screen, uh, and then we will see if someone in the chat could do it. Uh, Someone says, uh, T. Warren says, uh, my family told stories about the fountain of youth. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. What? A, all right. So now I did have some stories for that. We did actually was going to go into the fountain of youth and show you some videos and some stuff uh, that we were going to do. That's a good segue uh, in it. Um, and I should get into some of that, and we're probably, I probably, you know, I might do that tomorrow night. We'll get into the fountain of new youth. I got all that. We got all the research there for you. Uh, I got video clips of a seventy-year-old woman 
you know, and, you know, of course her husband, she's a nice woman, by the way, she, she changed the way she eat him and she let her husband keep eating whatever he want. And now he's saying, I wish I'd done that. Happy belated birthday. <sighs> Laura, you, I just, just thank you so much. Uh, there you go. 4044. Uh, appreciate it. Y'all give a shout out for the happy belated birthday, uh, from there. Uh, and, and pretty much, um, Bobby, I don't know about answering that question because it's, you know, I'm trying to find everything on the Noah's art. We don't do any politics here. So uh, we just kind of stay out of that stuff, both sides of the fence, no matter what. That's the one thing that keeps us all friends because there's, you know, politics is a, is a great, especially, you know, because we're in the UFO stuff and stories and, and all of that and, and pretty much. All right. So here's a question that we have. Drum roll for my audience. Uh, we got two, so I'm going to do one first, and then we will uh, go from there. Question is, besides Noah and his family, who else was on the ark? All right, so we got a couple of people that are answered, T. Warren, Nicole, uh, Lonnie, uh, three of you. Uh, who else was on the ark from there? You guys can answer that question. Next question was, uh, did Noah land in Turkey, Mount Everett, or in Africa? Great question. You guys can kind of go from there. All right. So she said, my apologies, Cash App Info uh, was in the shower. Okay, Conscious Goddess, let me put it back up real quick and uh, so that we can show you there. It's up there at the top. Um, and if you have not got your Wild Big Secret mug, go ahead and do that. We got a plethora of different shirts and stuff that's going to be going up, some new styles. We put up a whole nother different website uh, and, and anything there. So, uh, yeah, we, we're using a company that called Duda. If you know anything about that for the website, go there. And then if it's something you think you can work on, we would definitely can use your help to help build out that if any of you are good at that kind of stuff. All right, so... Uh, Let's take that down there. No problem. All right. So one of the questions is Noah and his three, his, his wife had three sons and their wives. And, and the guy lived for 900 years, years. So he, he could have had a whole plethora of people uh, from there. And uh, we can kind of go that. Laura says seven other people. And uh, let's see. Anybody else answer any of the other questions uh, from there? And, uh, all right. So there you go. We got that answer. Any other questions before we get out of here? Um, so that we can kind of, uh, go from there. No, Robert, I don't know anything about that story. Learn a lot tonight. Appreciate it. Arith. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So with that being said, yeah, tomorrow we can go into again, the fountain of youth and some stuff. Cause I actually, I have it in my notes here. And, and we can follow into it. I was just trying to shorten things up just a little bit because we do that. And our researchers uh, do a great job in presenting information and everything else. So give a shout out uh, to them. So um, let's see. He landed. Here's the answer to the question. Landed on Mount Arak in Turkey. So there's the answer to the question previously who asked, where did he land? And this was the question, did Noah land in Turkey, Mount Everett, or in Africa? So that's your answer. Uh, that's where he learned or landed the ship uh, from there. So we can kind of go from there. Cash app. Oh, he uh, got a cash app there. Thank you so much. I love it. I love the love. Believe me. I love the love. Appreciate the cash app. Uh, and it helps. The support helps. And, and, and I say this wholeheartedly because, you know, this is what I do full time and, and just try to, to, to pretty much uh, get some content and, and not to, to say, but yeah, we're, I'm, I'm now twisting more and, and going to put more content in here with you, more live streams, more uh, frequent from there. In fact, you know, my consensus right now was trying to figure out, is it better to live stream during the day or late at night or this time? Uh, what works? Uh, maybe the choice was three o'clock during the afternoons, you know, during the week and then maybe late on Friday or whatever, or late at night. Uh, matter of fact, put in a chat. A few of you, it, you know, late at night, 
or during the day is a good time to live stream. I'm going to start posting normal videos too. We got a whole thing, a whole plethora of stuff that's going to be coming out, but yeah, put that in there and pretty much from there. But again, the love from uh, Sonia, we got, excuse me, Droney. And uh, then um, let's see, I got your name here, but I want to make sure your um, your conscious goddess. Yeah, okay. So yeah, let's go with that. I want to put a real name out in the fray here from the cash out. But uh, thank you very much. Once again, any of you who's going to begin to process, want to support, help market some of the stuff that we're doing, uh, email me. We're still putting a team. If any of you are great storytellers, and, and you know, if you can tell stories and you write stories, you know. Uh, give me a holler because we're going to be, you know, combining some stuff with our researchers and storytellers and uh, create some great stuff. And anyway, contact at why the big secret dot com. And I'm going to say it right here. If you email me and do not want to put your telephone number for us to get a relationship for me to call you, don't do it because emailing back and forth, believe me, does not work well for me. Uh, and, and Lonnie, I usually handle all that stuff. And if she don't really recognize it, it is out the window. Uh, but I usually try to communicate as best as I can uh, with everyone that I can. All right, so someone said they like nighttime. Evening uh, is another time for Edith. Uh, do you have a membership? Now, I'm working on all of that. Uh, membership, you know, we got the True Seekers community on the Mighty, uh, Mighty uh, Network and, and all that stuff, but we got some stuff we're going to put there. She said, I am... Yeah, I, I, th I got your number, Laura. I, I, I thought I called, but if not, you're on that list to call. I do have your number. Uh, and uh, let's see. Nights for me, for Sonia, she says, and as well. And uh, what else we got? So everybody, not everybody, but we got a few people that says nights. So y'all like nighttime or, or pretty much from there. I'm not going to hold y'all up too much longer. Um, we have conceded if you want to leave now you can. We're just going to do a little small talk here for a few moments and, and, and pretty much. And then I'm going to leave, go over to 24-hour fitness. And by the way, my weight loss journey is on point. Uh, I've been doing the weight. I'm working out. Uh, changed my eating habits uh, a, a lot. Uh, and pretty much it's been pretty difficult trying to adjust, but I am adjusting. And so uh, just let you know that um, and I'll do a weigh-in for you guys. I was going to do a weekly, and that's weekly with two E's, not W-E-A-K for you scholars who wants to know my grammar uh, and all that stuff. So, But I'm thinking about monthly because I'm, in, you know, I realize I'm growing some, some, some muscles. I would have showed you my muffins. I took the pictures out on purpose. I was going to show you all tonight. I made some muffins, and then what happened to them a few days later because I'm not good at this right now. I'm not good at meal, meal prepping. It's been pretty difficult trying to put all of that stuff, and so now I'm just – changing um but i am feeling a lot better i got a lot of energy over these last two weeks uh you know my uh mindset is changing a little bit i do my affirmations and and everything is coming uh really well uh we're gonna do a roderick's kind of a team challenge with it and so uh, i'll put up an image in the next show where you can contact maria get involved with us and we can all do this together be accountability of partner partners uh, which is already uh, Native V is, is one as well. Uh, Lonnie, all of, you know, um, T. Warren, Nicole, those are all my accountability partners already. Uh, and so if you want to uh, get in for that. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big work. I got a lot of weight uh, that I want to uh, release, not lose, because you got to watch what you say, release the weight and, and pretty much do that. Um, I want to uh, win those conscious awards and at the same time step across the screen a little smaller. And then, um, of course, you know, uh, we would do that as a collective uh, from there. And so I feel good. I feel uh, comfortable uh, with all of that. And so with that being said, um, I like to uh, get ready to close this out. Uh, first of all, once again, thank everyone who supported the show. Uh, listen, we're going to cover a lot of stories. We're going to cover a lot of, uncover a lot of untruths, okay? And what we're hoping is that people don't become 
literally lazy when it gets down to research and what we're going to be doing because there's always a situation but hopefully we got people out there like yourself that can believe or believe in something that all their lives all their freaking lives they thought was true and then they get enough information and now they know that what they thought was true is not true and so if they can go through that transition that's great and then there's people who thought things wasn't true all of their lives and they get enough information and now they can move into the concept of it is true and we're looking to make sure that with why the big secret that we have those type of people that we can open up your minds we can open up your eyes and of course we know your eyes are useless when your mind is blind you have to think why and that's our goal to do that we're going to go deep with project black we're going to go deeper that you do you know uh to start the conversation in in the community and, and, and do some stuff so i just want you to know this is not going to be no joke we're going to do this but in the meantime you know it's been a plum pleasing pleasure serving you that's what i do i'm here to serve uh and i enjoy that um uh, and i enjoy my team that's working with me so give a shout out to the researchers uh, the producer, Alani, you got T. Warren that's in here in the chat, Nicole. Uh, these ladies do a dynamic job of uh, putting things together. And, and, they, and they put stacks of things about this big, and then I read about this big. And, but they stay with it. They're not upset uh, when I leave stuff out and stuff like that. And then I got a great team. Um, and I really think them being what I call and I'm about to shut this down as a GPS in my life right and you know how that works the GPS give you directions but when I change directions there are some people tell you go back go back my GPS team they recalculate it'll say recalculate and then they'll say if you're going to go this direction this is the best way to go Roderick you go boy all right so I, I love each and every one of them and you all too and to the haters if you don't know me and you want to hate on me, go ahead. I can still love you and have never met you. That's how we're going to roll. So good night, each and every one of you. Uh, and we're going to do this. And let me close you out with our extra. Good night. <laughs>